Here are the controls before the profile is actually running and by pushing the green button I initialize the profile to be started. I use this portion of the profile in order to heat up the GPU and the board around 90 degrees C to get rid of all the water to prevent popcorning. Once I know that the GPU and the board have reached around 85 to close to 90 degrees C, that is the time when I actually apply the flux. And please notice that the flux right away goes below the chip so it melts and it is literally being sucked below the chip. There is nothing left. It is not running away like when you would have applied it when the board is cold. In know how how to trick this procedure because it really really helps you a lot with the reflows to get uh, successful reflows and rebows going uh, because uh, you are really putting the flux in where it is necessary. So here you can see in this angle that it literally just sucks the flux into right below the GPU. At this portion of the profile I am actually heating up the board and the GPU in order to reach the activation temperature of the flux at which it is really removing the oxide layer from the boards below. Next the air temperatures are then going up to around 195 degrees C and this is because we are then getting ready to actually weld the chip so at this temperature we are not close yet to the liquidus temperature of the solder balls. So it means that we can still put a lot of uh, thermal energy into this whole system. At these elevated temperatures, now then the flux is uh, reaching its uh, very final activation procedure, which is uh, very much over at this stage already. Here you can see that the excess flux is actually bubbling out below the chip which was originally below the GPU. So now that flux is nicely flowing out and then just being burned up at this temperature. Here we are getting really serious now. So at this nozzle temperature of about 255 is the time when we reach liquidus temperature of the lead free solder. So now the GPU and the board is roughly about 230 to 235 degrees C, which personally I found based on my tests that I really need to go up to these high temperatures in order to ensure that even highly oxidized lead free solder is actually being reflown properly. Right after the profile is over I then actually quickly lift the top heating nozzle and push it to the side in order to ensure that I can cool down the chip as fast as possible. Next then I'm gonna activate the cooling fan manually. At least on this device you can do it. And by manually doing the cooling, then this does a start a, a square cage fan which then pushes the air parallel through the board. And this cools down the GPU quite fast. Finally I will wait until the bottom infrared heating plates and also the board itself cools well below 70 to even 50 degrees C so I can take it off with um, my soldering gloves without burning myself and also without uh, deforming the board because the board is still quite soft at these temperatures. Here is then the graphic card after we have removed it from the hot air or infrared reworking station and you should not really work on the card until it is still hot. Let it nicely cool down and after the reflow or reboil you should definitely do a optical inspection on the chip itself whether it is sitting right. I already did that. So you have to just look from the side whether the angle is fine and the chip is uh, sitting completely flush on the board. After the physical inspection if you are fine with how the chip looks like 
then it is time to clean up the remaining flux which is like a residue at least I really like this um, even if it is a fake cheap Chinese version of the Amtech flux I must tell you that it is really not burning bad and it does not leave some really nasty crust on the board and it's relatively easy to clean it up and also do not wait several days because this thing will harden no matter what kind of flux you are using and then it will be really tough to remove it. To clean around the periphery of the chip I just use the good old isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds. After cleaning up the area around the GPU from the remains of the flux which kind of hardened a little bit due to the heat on the board now it's then time to then put together this thing and that is because you cannot really test these graphic cards without the cooler namely they get hot very very fast I mean within five seconds this thing will be blasting heat out so you cannot get away of trying to testing it without the cooling unit which came with the graphic card if you are not confident that your reflow was hitting the right temperatures eventually you might save time by putting in the most you know important screws like as an example the first uh, these four large screws around the GPU which are putting pressure on the cooling unit and uh, such but otherwise I don't really see how you can save time on repairing graphic cards to test it and I think this is also one of the reasons why economically is not very viable anymore to try to repair graphic cards because the amount of time it takes you to remove and to put back the heating and cooling and all kinds of cables and the cooler and such is just way too much and it gonna cut into your uh, income is because as you see the seal pads slightly move out of their positions when you separate it from the printed circuit board and keep in mind that these seal pads are supposed to sit on specific locations where there are components on the printed circuit board which are actually dissipating a lot of heat on a small surface area so then we need to put then these seal pads on those components back and then apply on top of it this aluminum heat sink here is then this aluminum heat sink cleaned I actually wash the surface normally with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol because there is always a little bit of rubber or you know this silicone left after the seal pads no matter how carefully you remove them and this is what then I wash off with isopropyl alcohol next then take the seal pads and carefully put them on those places where they have been so as an example these square ones are on top of the RAM modules and nicely arrange them with a pair of tweezers without squeezing them because that's gonna cut this uh, soft uh, material and after you are done then just gently push down a little bit you do not need to use any kind of glue or heat sink compound or something because this uh, kind of uh, soft material is actually attaching to the surface quite good and needless to say for such an operation you should definitely check the picture what you made before uh, in order to make sure that you put back the seal pads in the right locations where they really do belong here are then all the seal pads then placed on these chips which generate heat like these are the RAM modules here and these are here the field effect transistors for the uh, buck converter so there are practically here six phases for the GPU itself and then there are two phases here and these are then generating the power for the RAM modules themselves and anyway so coming back to these seal pads 
As I mentioned, normally they should stick to the components. If you by chance you have some really really dried out seal pads because of the excessive heat, then you can try to apply a tiny tiny little bit, but I have to emphasize this, a very little amount of non-silver containing um, heatsink compound right on top of the chip to which you want to attach the uh, seal pad and then put the seal pad on top, push it down and the surface tension gonna hold it until you put the aluminum block back on the top of the unit. Next then you're gonna have to put on this aluminum heat spreader or heat sink as you wish to call it right back on top of the PCB. It's a good idea to keep the PCB somehow fixed so that the seal pads are not falling off. And then first of all you need to plug in the uh, thermocouple if you have one, then also the cooling fan, then it is time to then carefully push down the aluminium block. And when you do this then you should really do a downward motion, do not go on the sides because that gonna easily push the seal pads off the different RAM modules and especially of the four small field effect transistors. Next then I'm gonna put in a couple of the screws from the bottom of the PCB by keeping the PCB and the aluminium block pressed together with my hands into this uh, aluminium block so that it no longer slides around on the PCB. For putting the screws back, then you're just gonna push the aluminium block against the printed circuit board with your hand. Also do it on the other side as well. Carefully lift the whole thing without moving the aluminium block to the side. And then turn the whole sandwich around carefully. And then put it down so that now the PCB sits on top of this aluminium block so then we can screw in the screws from the uh, printed circuit board side and this way we can be sure that we are not uh, disturbing any of the seal pads. After you have put in the smaller screws in the PCB then you can be sure that this PCB is not going anywhere anymore. We haven't attached yet the real cooling element, the so-called uh, cooling chamber on top of the GPU uh, and that is the next step. Before you reattach this cooling chamber to the graphic processor unit, you should definitely clean it, including the old heatsink compound you can wash this down with isopropyl alcohol so that it is a clean metal surface being exposed. Then it is time to actually clean the GPU itself and that is because no matter how carefully you work you always gonna touch the GPU surface with some sort of uh, fatty or oily fingers or yeah uh, it doesn't matter what you do there will be a small amount of impurity attached to the surface of the thing. And as you see, this is re really a nice mirror finish chip. And we need to then clean any kind of residue off the chip itself. Uh, otherwise, the heat transfer to the cooling chamber would not be optimal. And that's why then in the next step, then clean the chip with isopropyl alcohol and as usual with uh, cotton bud. If you eventually have lint-free cloth that works also very nicely as well. It's then time to apply the new heatsink compound. Personally I like this Gallit Gates A2 silver containing compound. It's not that expensive and it is pretty good for the amount of money you pay for it. You should apply the heatsink compound in a really really thin layer. So normally I'm just putting small dabs. After you have applied the heatsink compound in a thin layer, so there is really no need to add a thick layer that doesn't help you at all. Just put a thin layer on. Uh, anyway, so then take your vapor chamber or the cooling chamber as you wish to call it. 
put it in and then press it down. And once you pressed it down, you should move it a little bit to the side. And this is because you should then distribute the heat sink compound as evenly as possible. And this little bit of side motion is doing exactly just that. Now, one of the really basic tests what you can do whether the heat sink compound is really distributed nicely is that because if it is, then you should not be able to lift the uh, vapor chamber anymore because there is uh, no longer air gap between the cooling chamber and the top of the GPU. So this means that if we turn now this whole card around as an example, the cooling chamber is no longer dropping off in spite of uh, there are no screws installed. And that is just because of the surface tension between the three materials and the heatsink compound not allowing air to enter in the gap in between. If you are eventually truly paranoid about the heatsink compound distribution, you can then still remove the uh, vapor chamber and take care when you remove it to do, don't apply any extra crazy force what you don't need. And anyway, as you see, the heatsink compound is spread really nicely and evenly. Uh, in fact, there is a little bit more than uh, it should be needed. So I might even remove a tiny little bit of this heatsink compound and then put back the vapor chamber. Of course, in the next step, then we're gonna attach the four larger screws which were spring-loaded here to the bottom of the GPU card, which then gonna put a larger amount of pressure on the cooling chamber and then press it against the GPU itself. To keep an even pressure distribution on top of the GPU over the whole surface area, it's a good idea to tighten these screws in about turns of two, so you turn it twice, then you go to the other side, and then you do this over in this eight pattern. So now I do it here, then I come here, and then rinse and repeat until the screws are tightened, but not crazy tightened. One have to keep that in mind. If you crazy tighten these screws here, you might crack the PCB or you might break the chip itself. From this point on, then you can just assemble the card together, practically doing the reverse of what you did to disassemble it. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna be back to actually test this thing. Okay, that's a good sign. That's a BIOS being initialized. So at least the video card is doing something. Okay, so the NVIDIA driver is nicely loaded right there. And this is then seeing the GTX 780, which is a definitely a good sign. And there is about 400 megabyte used by the Linux kernel. Next, I'm gonna be running the Furmark in order to put some stress test on the GPU itself. I found that this test is really able to, you know, dump most of the GPUs which are not stable. So then let's go push it with the stress test or shall we do the benchmark first? Here is then the card under action. Most probably you can hear it as it is really cranking up here. Yeah, and now you can definitely hear in the background that the GPU is slowly cranking up. So it's definitely being heated up under stress by doing this uh, type of uh, crazy calculations for this furry donut as it rotates around.